Okay, so hydrogen peroxide decomposes to produce water and oxygen. 7.1.1, the activation energy for this reaction is 75 kilojoules and the heat of the reaction is negative uh, 196 kilojoules. Define the term activation energy. Reaction. Okay, so I'm not sure what the, the um, uh, correct definition for this is. Uh, is it in here? Yeah, I think this is a, a grade 11 definition. Yeah, yeah, it must be a grade 11 definition. So it is just um, 7.1.1. In this case, it's the minimum energy needed or required um, for okay, uh, the reaction to take place. Not for the reaction to take place. That's that's wrong. It's for the minimum energy needed for the reaction. Um, for um, the re the minimum energy needed for a collision to happen. Right. Okay. Oh, that is also spelled wrong for the collision uh, to happen according to our collision theory. But it is also the minimum energy needed for the reaction to take place from our endo and exothermic graphs, right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, just make sure what this definition is. I'm going to put a star next to it, okay, for you guys to, to make sure what the definition should be. Then 7.1.2 asks, redraw the set of axes along in your answer book and complete the potential energy di diagram. So this one. And indicate the value of the activated complex and our products. Okay, so firstly, we see delta H here is negative. So is it exothermic or endothermic? Exothermic. exothermic. So our graph is going to look like this, right? Yes. Okay, so now they want us to... Uh, add the values for the activated complex. Okay, where's the activated complex? So at the top, top, top. Yes. Yes. Okay. And what will the the the, the um, energy be for for the activated complex? The, 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 oh, wait, isn't it seventy five kilojoules? Seventy five kilojoules. Seventy five. Okay, it is from here up until here. That's our activation energy. This is EA. Okay, and now they want us to add the energy of our products. What will this be? The negative one? Yeah. Uh, no, it's from primary initial. Oh, that would be our products. Isn't it negative five minus that one? Negative five? No, negative one ninety six. Yes, it would be negative 196, okay? So, with the marking for this, they tell, they say, okay, this shouldn't, it's, it's fine if it's not to scale. Okay, so our uh, energy of our product, right? Okay, so our reaction heat, delta H, is the energy of, let me actually write it, write it down. So, let me write it down here. Delta H is equal to the energy of our products minus the energy of our reactant. Okay, and the energy of our reactants in this case is zero. Okay, so if we put in here zero, our energy of our products will just be equal to delta H. We said the negative one is the 
Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, because delta H is equal to negative 196, and the energy of our reactants we can read from the graph here is zero. So if we put the zero in here, this term falls away. So the energy of our products will be delta H. Okay, you guys understand this? So what's the, from the exhalation compared to the final thing, what's the bonding? That. Yes. Bonding energy, yes. Which is the de-association? The what? The de-association one. The... It's the same as the activation energy. Okay, so they tell us when magne powdered magnesium dioxide is added to the reaction mixture, mixture, the rate of reaction increases. On this graph, okay, use broken lines to show the path of the reaction when the manganese, oh not magnesium, manganese dioxide is added. Okay, so they tell us they add something. And the rate of the reaction increases. What did they add? Okay, so they add something and the reaction rate increases. Okay, so you're thinking about the chapter we're busy with now. Remember, this is previous chapter. It's a catalyst. Okay, so they add a catalyst. Okay, so re reaction rate increases. Okay, so... What does a catalyst do? Yes, yes. Okay, so in this context where we are talking about our reaction rate, yes. So now they ask us to use broken lines on this graph to show what this graph would look like with a catalyst. So our activation energy lowers. That means our hump is going to be lower. Okay, this is a very terribly drawn uh, dotted line or a broken line. Okay, but it just shows us our activation energy is now smaller. I'll give you guys some time to write this down. Did I record your class? Anyway. Hmm? Now, I was wondering if I recorded your class today. Because two people were absent. Yeah, Shlono and Fatima. Okay. Okay, so 7.1.4. Use the collision theory to explain how manganese dioxide influences the rate of decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so let's write this down. 7.1.4. I'm just going to go to back to blue. Okay, so a catalyst lowers the activation energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what does the collision theory say? Let's, let, let's quickly go back to it. It says, uh, it explains the reaction rate as a result of particles colliding with a certain amount of minimum energy. Okay. So we lower the activation energy. So we lower the certain amount of energy our particles must have. Okay. So this means more particles...
will have sufficient energy to take part in the reaction. This means that more effective collisions will okay more effective collisions per unit time okay so more effective collisions per unit time will occur and the reaction rate increases okay so basically it is this block catalyst lowers the activation energy required for the reactions so more particles have sufficient energy to overcome our activation energy therefore more effective collisions per unit time thus the rate of reaction increases so if you guys go and these four blocks for surface area concentration temperature and positive catalyst those definitions all contain an explanation with uh, about the collision theory so if you learn those four blocks and you see okay in this question a catalyst was added so i need to write the catalyst block down you will get all the marks okay so because what we just said is basically exactly this definition okay so that was 7.1.4 okay okay if you still need to draw the graph Okay, guys, done. Okay. No. no. What are you still writing? The, the, thing there, what you the graph. Oh, or the thing on the bottom. Are you fine? Okay, can I, are you sure? Yes. Okay. So, now they tell us, woo, graph A and B below were obtained for the volume of oxygen produced over time under different conditions okay so as we know oxygen is one of our products okay and they say this is the volume of oxygen uh, that was obtained under different circumstances now they ask us calculate the average rate of reaction in specifically they say in cubic decimeters per second so if they want cubic decimeters per second they want volume over time okay so we want to do this between 10 seconds and 40 seconds for graph a yeah it's always volume over time okay the difference between the products and the reactants is whether we use a negative in front or not so our rate is equal to our change in volume over our change in time. Is it the other's concentration over time? Depends on what the is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
Okay, so we have our final volume minus our initial volume, and we have our final time minus our initial time. Yes, very much so. Okay, so they ask us between uh, 40 and 10 seconds, so 40 minus 10 here. Now we use the graph to read off what those values will be. So at 40 seconds, for graph a. yes, for graph A, we have this dot here. Okay, so again, use at your own discretion. We will use 52. Okay, but this is other method that men used to do, but I forgot it. You can't the blocks and then you divide them by the one. Okay, so one block we see here, yeah, okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten blocks. So one block represents one cubic decimeter. Okay. Okay. So if we look here and we see, okay, this is where our dot is, okay, it's at about 51.5, okay, so we just use 52, okay, so 52 minus the value at 10, so now 5 blocks will represent 10, okay, because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 blocks represents 20 seconds so that means one block represents two seconds okay because we go two four six eight okay when you count the blocks 20 divided by 10 yes okay so one two three four five so we are here okay let me just keep my eye on that so it would be about here, okay, so right between 10 and 20, okay, 15, okay, I'm just going to use 16 because the math for 16 is already done, but once again, your answers would be, will be given in a range, okay, so uh, if you have the around about the correct number, you can still get the correct answer. Yes, cubic decimeters per second. Okay, then 7.2.2. .2. Use the information in graph A to calculate the mass hydrogen peroxide used in the reaction. Assume that all the hydrogen peroxide decomposed and use 24 cubic Decimeter. per mole as the molar volume of oxygen. So they tell us Vm is equal to 24. Okay. So, now we must use the information on this graph to calculate the mass of hydrogen peroxide. So hydrogen peroxide is our reactant, okay? And oxygen is our product. So we see when the reaction has finished, okay, in graph A, when the reaction has finished, we have 60 cubic decimeters of oxygen. Uh, like this. Because we reached our equilibrium. Okay, so no more uh, oxygen is being made. So this is question what? 7.2.2. Okay, so they tell us Vm is equal to 24. Okay, now how are we going to calculate the mass hydrogen peroxide? Yes, they, they, they are asking to use this graph to calculate the mass of the hydrogen peroxide used. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
Uh, what you're saying now is we get the volume, we convert the volume of our oxygen into moles, and then we use that moles to calculate mass. Yes. How are we going to do that? Yes. Given. Yes. And then we're going to say 60 divided by 24. You give N. Yes. And then we're going to say N is equal to small N over big N. Or okay. Okay. Three. So you're falling into a trap right now. Okay. So your idea is correct. That's exactly what we're going to do. But you're just missing a big step in between. Okay. So this is our oxygen. They are asking for the mass of the hydrogen peroxide. So you're going to use the mole table. So we're going to use the mole table. So we're going to do exactly what she says. We're just going to use the mole table in between. So the first thing we do is we calculate the mole of our oxygen. So our mole is equal to V. Wait, wait, wait. Mole is equal to V over Vm. Yes, V over Vm. The volume of oxygen we use is obviously when we are at our equilibrium. So this is 60. So we have 60 divided by 24 because they tell us to use Vm here. So that gives us 2.5 moles. Is that reaction balanced? Yes, they give us the balanced reaction. We'll see it now. Okay, so we have our mole table next. So we have two hydrogen peroxide, so H2O2, that decays into water, H2O, and oxygen. Okay, so we need a two there. Okay, so we have a two, two, one, two, 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 two one. Okay, but we are not worrying about the oxygen, uh, the, not the oxygen, the water right now. Yes. Okay, so this 2.5 moles that we calculated, what value is that? Okay, beginning change or end? End. end. Okay, so we end at 2.5. That means since it is a product, we started at zero. So we had to add 2.5 moles. Yes. Okay, we don't worry about the water. Yes, we work backwards because the volume of oxygen that we used is the ending value of oxygen. So it's when the reaction has already finished. Okay. So we work backwards. So now using our mole table and the fact that um, hydrogen peroxide to oxygen is a two to one ratio. So we have, let's just write it out. So we have H2O2, right? H2O2 to oxygen, which is two to one. So we take our moles here and we multiply 2,5 times 2 over 1 and we get 5. So we have a negative 5 moles of hydrogen peroxide. Yes. Okay, so so Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so let's just write that uh differently. So we have 2.5 oxygen here and we have to multiply that with 2 over 1 to get the peroxide value. Okay. Okay, so we have a negative 5 and then we say we end with 0. Okay, that means at the beginning we had 5 moles of peroxide. Yes, now we have the mole. 
the mass. Okay, so our mole is 5. We want the mass and the molar mass of H2O2. Ooh, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Did I say water? I, me I meant this one, H2O2. It, it's 34, okay? So, oxygen is 16. Yes, times Yes, so we have 16 for oxygen. We have two oxygens, that's 32. Hydrogen is one, we have two, so it's 30, 32 plus two gives us 34. Okay, so our mass will be 170 grams. You good there? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so that was the last question here. Now we have still one part left. Okay, so there's one more question about that graph. How, how does the mass of hydrogen peroxide used to obtain graph B compared to that used for graph A? So choose from greater, smaller, or equal. So, we have two graphs here, right? Yes. This is our volume versus time for our oxygen. So, we had some H2O2. We used it for experiment A. We had some H2O2. We used it for experiment B. Now, they're asking the amount we used at the start for both A and B. Okay, how does that compare? Did B have less? Did B have more? Or did B have the same? Okay, so they are, they are asking, let's read the question again. How does the mass of hydrogen peroxide used to obtain graph B compare to that used to obtain graph A? So they are uh, want us to compare the mass of the H2O2 used to get graph A and graph B. Okay, so how did we just get the mass? What did we start with? What did we start with? The volume of the oxygen. The volume of the oxygen. So we did the same thing for graph B. Yes. Okay, so what is, well, how much uh, volume of O2 formed for graph B? Look at the graph. Okay. So for graph B, what volume of oxygen formed? 60. 60. So the same volume of oxygen formed. So if we were to do this calculation again, we would get the same answer. Okay, so our answer here is it's the same. It's equal to, equal to. Hmm? Okay, see, that's what they wanted you to think because this is a trick question. Okay. The shape doesn't matter because we only look at what happened at the end. Okay. So they wanted to trick you by looking at the shape. Okay, so for graph A, our reaction rate is higher, right? Because we reach 60 uh, cubic decimeters faster. Okay, so maybe they used a catalyst. Maybe the temperature was higher or something. Okay. So now we have this tiny graph. So they say three energy distribution graphs for oxygen gas produced under different conditions is shown. So energy distribution, this is our Maxwell-Boltzmann curve. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this solid line is our initial line. The curve with the solid line, it represents one mole of oxygen at 90 degrees Celsius. So did curve P or Q does what represents when we use one mole of oxygen at 120 degrees Celsius? So we have an initial... Uh, experiment of this okay one mole at 90 degrees celsius now we have one mole at 120 degrees celsius now they ask us what curve represents that experiment p why it 
if we okay so let's look again we started with one mole of oxygen at 90 degrees celsius now we have one mole of oxygen at 120 degrees celsius what's different between this one this one okay so temperature so we increase the temperature what happens to a maxwell boltzmann curve when we increase the temperature it's q, it's q. The solid line. Oh, okay, okay. So it's Q. Okay, so it's Q. Do you understand? No. Okay, I'm talking behind you. <laughs> okay, so our answer here is Q. So if we look in the notes, when we have a change in temperature, we see that the whole graph shifts to the right. Okay. If we change the concentration, we have more particles, so we have a bigger area under the graph. So our, er our initial graph is basically just stretched outwards. Okay? And the last one would be our catalyst, but our catalyst doesn't change the graph at all. It only changes our activation energy. Okay. So now they ask at the last one if... Two moles of oxygen gas is produced at 90 degrees Celsius. So now it's pretty obviously going to be B because there's only one more option to choose from. Okay, but as we can see, if we uh, compare our initial graph with P, we can see our beginning and end points the same. It's just stretched upwards. That means we changed our concentration. Okay, because they say two moles of oxygen when we started with one mole. So our answer here is 